We don't just get up for another day. We rise. We don't just work. We endeavor. We're women and men for and with others. We have hope. We believe. And we celebrate. Why are we different? So we can be the difference. This is the Seton Hall story, one that comes to life every day on our campus. This is the place where great minds discover, innovate, collaborate, and find their true calling. This is the place where passion has a purpose, where learning inspires leading. The bonds we make, the values we teach, inspire our community to take heart and take action. This is Seton Hall University. This is what great minds can do. All right, welcome everyone to EGF Season 3 for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We have got a fantastic match. I'm PVE, and this is South Beach, and our competitors. Could you tell us about our competitors today? Yes, yeah, so our matchup is Seton Hall versus Marquette, and Seton Hall... Yep, Seton Hall is going to send in Blobman35 first, while Marquette is sending in Chico now for Seton Hall uh, Blobman. I'm not, I can't remember who he plays, uh, but let me see who Marquette plays real quick. Uh, Marquette um, Chico, that is, uh, is a Donkey Kong main. So he's starting off with a heavy hitter. So I don't know if Blobman's got a heavy hitter under their belt, but Donkey Kong is probably a given for Marquette yeah. and Chico. For sure. In Seton Hall, we've definitely seen quite a few players. We've seen Bowser, the Bowser player. We've seen two Falcos. We've seen G-Man and Trey. So those are definitely two players to watch out for as well. But mm -hmm. this is a new team, so they've still got to get their footing. You know, just like get used to this environment. Indeed. And they are mostly freshmen too, Seton Hall. So definitely a tall task for mm -hmm. most of these young players here. Uh, still awaiting the bans, I believe, um, but right now, um, I think we're trying to get a stage list, possibly, um, if not, we're, we will get a bans list soon, or sooner rather than later, but right now, um, if you're playing, uh, Donkey Kong, what stage would you want to pick first? I know quite a lot of Donkey Kong players love Pokemon Stadium 2, so that's definitely a stage to consider. Also, Small Battlefield. Wait, no, I don't think that's a starting pick for this stage list. Oh, just asking. Cool is starting PS2, and they say always. <laughs> always. So, there it Why is. Why not? Yeah, you have to gentlemen to PS2 all mm -hmm. the time. PS2 I mean, makes the best games. It, indeed, right there. They also... And make debatable make the best consoles well i mean mm. ps2 is the console it is the console true but they have some good successors that's what i heard but my xbox says otherwise <laughs> but we also are commentating on a switch game so as soon as we uh, get this arena into ps2 we're gonna have a fantastic match but so far, we're going to start off with Donkey Kong, I believe, for Sir Wichiko. Um, in terms of what Blahman's going with in Seton Hall, um, how would you... I mean, seems like, you know, going up against a heavy character, I'm not sure what you'd be. Oh, I guess Captain Falcon. That's a good one. What would you say? Yeah, I think Captain Falcon's definitely a solid pick. This is one character that, you know, very high damage in general and quite a lot of kill power so even against donkey kong's very heavy weight whoa, oh my that was a very good high whew, that high recovery was perfect there because otherwise they would have gotten blown up like it looks like they're getting blown up anyways almost yeah that was definitely quite the lucky recovery from blob man i mean also the speed factor i think he has a lot of good enough speed oh don't do that Ah. Okay. Didn't go over the tech check. Instead, went for the regular throw. But oh no! Come on. That's now. Just a, yeah, that's, that's just the cargo throw into the. Uh, 
and mm -hmm. that took that first stock pretty well. Blobman definitely is going to have to make some adjustments here in order to take a stock off of Chico, especially because Donkey Kong are more of a grappler character almost. You know, these heavy characters generally fit that archetype, and because of that, you really... Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, what? oh. Worked in uh, Blobman's favor, and I mean, the damage percent he's got right now definitely says so, too. For sure. And Chico, though, Chico's still able, like, that was an SD. Let's be real here. That was an SD being a little bit too greedy off stage. Because of that, that was what took the stock. So Chico does still have a very solid lead and a good command of the momentum. But who knows? Sometimes an SD is all you need to take control of a game. Oh, ah. speaking of SDs, though. Mm -hmm. Game don't lie. Yes, yeah. the game don't lie. I mean, I was about to say earlier on the uh, Chico SD, uh, Blobman probably should have just gone for the, ooh, nice uh, Falcon kick. Um, oh, wow. And a That's... Falcon punch. Not going to help much. Oh, oh. training. Oh. We're just seeing some haymakers go back and forth. This is just classic. Oh, my God. <laughs> some classic flat power play from both characters right now. Yep. I mean, they're just going they're just going for kills, not even hits. For they're sure. just straight up for kills right now. Oh, that, that's definitely a way to put it. These two are sort of just swinging. <laughs> this is quite a matchup. Blobman's just... That He's just waiting there. away. Yeah, He's... and Chico's just waiting there, just like, okay, approach me. I've got fully mm -hmm. charged giant punch. What will you do? Yep. I would and... grab. Oh, and that's gonna be a throw. And Chico takes game one of this Marquette Seton Hall matchup in quite interesting fashion as well. For sure. That was a very interesting set. Or not set a very interesting first game. That is a two stock though for Marquette to put on the board. So that's already two points. Definitely not a great start for Seton Hall. Hopefully for Blobman, he can you know get something going. Mm -hmm. Next game, maybe not th just start swinging as much. Maybe get a bit more like maybe a bit more of the up air. Some of those you know some of those starters that are relatively safe, or maybe a nair. Go for those throws more often. Some, some, you know, some general Falcon things. Indeed. Yeah, get some, get some hits off too. Don't go for the smash attacks usually. Maybe throw in some tilt attacks here and there. Try to get mm -hmm. your damage on your opponent. I mean, we definitely saw Donkey Kong finish with 198% with max rage. So yeah. it is, you know, you can, you gotta just hit, you can hit characters as hard as you want, but, you know, if you want to kill him, helps to get some damage off. For Even sure. I know that. Um, also another disadvantage of using smash attacks against Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is a character that doesn't have the greatest frame data. And if you're using smash attacks a lot, you don't really have that advantage of sort of out speeding them anymore in terms of your move. So generally a good idea to, you know, use a bit more of those quicker attacks to, you know, stop Donkey Kong's threatening moves in their tracks. Gotcha. Now, it looks like the stage we are going to next is Smashville. Uh, the band was Kalos, Dan uh, Town and City, and Final Destination. And I believe we might get a uh, character switch here on the side of... I believe it is on the side of Marquette. Um... But we don't know. Hmm. It'd be just, I mean, Donkey Kong did pretty good against Captain Falcon there, so. That's true. We could have played, um, maybe it's a chance to play Sora, as our producer mentioned. Uh, and it's actually, we're getting word, it's going to be Donkey Kong's nemesis, King K. Rule. Hmm, okay, a little bit of a... Going little, uh, from the uh, little face heel turn here. A little uh, 
frown and shoot and suck and throw out of the stage action right there. Yeah. I think that generally this is probably Chico's plan to maybe abuse some of that armor. Especially because Captain Falcon doesn't have that many moves to break through it. Oh, wow. That move I'm... probably could. Yeah, but I don't think... Yeah, I think oh. you're probably not getting hit by that in general. Mm -hmm. I have to agree there. Uh, I would grab that crown if I was Blob Man. Get that objective. I don't objective. think he needs it. I guess not. He yeah, needs Chico to... didn't even need the crown. Because yeah. that's a great landing option, but you don't need a landing option when it... Oh my goodness. That was two hits. That was two hits, and it pretty much evened that stock up. Oh. Was he trying to go for another pocket punch? I, I thought think I so. Him. Looks like Trey's getting a little... Or sorry, not Trey. Uh, Blobman's getting a little desperate. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this was kind of a miss right there, but great connection on the up special. And almost went the oh. wrong way and just get punched in the back. Not oh. quite sure. Okay, getting a little bit of damage done. Oh my oh. god! Oh. oh! Wow. And it's gonna be a three stock to finish out. And a rather quick one as well, if I do say so myself. For Chico sure. wins for Marquette. They take game one, seven to nothing Marquette. Seton Hall, Flex on him. nada. Flex on him. Flex on him, Chico. That was, well, you know, not a lot to, uh, not a there lot to dissect in this match. Yeah, there wasn't very much, like, there wasn't very much, like, happening in that, like, the game was very short. Like, it ended in under a minute and a half. It ended actually in under a minute and 20. Now we so, might, now we might have some clip of the year right here. A little back just, air and then hop oh. and then spike. Oof, that was, That's, that was, that was some brutal. confidence right there from Chico. Mm-hmm. I that mean, confidence. and that's what you need to start off your team. You need a player that can really just get the team riled up. Indeed. Try to get that uh, energy in for uh, Marquette early on. Um, looks like Seton Hall is going to send an Alzer for round two. And we're, uh, we just got word Ma Marquette is going to send in Quas. Alzer, obviously, uh, Bowser player, and mm -hmm. I believe Quas is the uh, Pokemon trainer. Yes. So, Bowser is a player that actually was able to win a set against a player from uh, U University of Miss or Mississippi State University, so that is something to consider. This is a player who could definitely be considered one of this team's best players, so. Indeed. And we're already just getting uh, asked to see if um, if Seton Hall either is like, hey, do you just want to ban or should we just go ahead and run it back to PS2 once again? So we will find out the answer very soon. But yeah, definitely if you're going up, um, you have Pokemon Trainer going up against Bowser. Obviously, like, how, how do you, how would you like go about that? You know, Bowser is just such a heavy character. But you have like three characters to use Pokemon Trainer, so how do you, how would you go against that? Probably get a bit more of the, so using Squirtle in that neutral game at the very start, you know, get a bit of that, like you can outspeed them, get some good conversions in because Bowser's very heavy and very big, so you can get a lot of high damage combos. And then you could sort of switch after that, uh, like once the opponent has gotten to a high enough percent because Bowser can kill Squirtle at very, at very low percents because of how light Squirtle is. Mm -hmm. So Indeed. eventually you want to just switch to like Ivysaur or Charizard, you know, battle the big boys. Yep. I think it does break Squirtle's side. Uh, command grab because it is a grab. And it's armor. Oh, just starting off with a taunt. Okay. Confidence here from Owzer. The battle of the turtles. 
Or, That's very true. You know, my hardcore Nintendo fans are going to say, Bowser's a Koopa, not a turtle. I'm like, okay. We all He's know got a shell. He He's got a shell. Yeah, Come exactly. On. But either way. Reptile. Oh my, and yep. Can't get eaten by that flame breath because look at that. That was a, like, they started at like 15 and now they're 53. And this went from like tough to definitely doable here. <laughs> that was. We know what fire does to plants. Very true. But now Quas is gonna fight fire with fire, bringing in Charizard. The lizard Ooh. boy. And it looks like Owser's really taken control of this game now. You know, this pace, it started in Quaz's favor, but Owser was able to... Oh, never mind. Quaz has managed to get a successful edge guard. He's just the back air with the tail. It's gonna oh. do it! And then just real quick, had uh, a nice little dance on there. Looks like uh, Quaz didn't like that. Quickly switched to Charizard to get some damage. Now we're going back to Squirrel for that neutral game. Ooh, and I love the way that Bowser avoided the Oh no! You just air dodged right into Bowser Flame Breath. Like 30%. Indeed. Here comes a little plant bomb. Able oh. to avoid the flames. Now that was trying a very to, good job. Trying to just do some aerial combos right here, but just in the meantime, spamming those leaf boomerang thingies that Ivysaur has in their arsenal. Oh, oh, almost. That was almost the stock right there, and this is the battle of the big boys. Here it is, the uh, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah going on right now. That kind of beat. There you go. Oh, and missed the Bowser Bomb. Interesting move to try to catch him right there with the Bowser Bomb. I would have tried to just do the command grab on the platform, but not even going to get the chance as Quas takes another stop. Interesting move. Interesting how that went the other direction and not the other one. Probably Ooh. just moving. Oh! That was, can't. that was like perfect spacing, but luckily for Quas, they actually had the right idea of just get up attacking, having that invincibility to stop what would have been a very dangerous ledge covering up. Yeah. I have to agree. And again, the up B action. Oh. And wow, the shell oh kind of my. survived a little bit. It survived, but Quaz took so much damage. Yeah, Quaz needs to find a better way to avoid the fire breath. Obviously, you know, we saw him duck under a little bit of the fire breath to Squirtle, but not going to happen. Oh, and right as the... Oh, wow. Whoa! What is oh. what is this match? What even is this match right they're, here? They're both fishing for a kill. They want it so bad, and they're playing so carefully because they know that the other person so ah. careful. They're not gonna hit. This could be at four quas. Nope, Bowser's too heavy. He is a thick boy indeed. And this is Max Rage Bowser too. So. Oh no, that's but it. But a that's throw it. is gonna take him out of the house. And Quas, once again for Marquette, takes game number two, or game one, upset game number two. And okay. So, an interesting game to digest here. Definitely just mm -hmm. a lot of this game, pretty much throughout, is just fishing for those kills. Yes, for sure. And there was a lot of times where. Owser got a lot of damage that Quas should not have been taking with the flame breath just sort of going for maximum value. It was very unfortunate. Indeed, we saw right there Owser try to do the uh, side air that just missed, not connected. And then just, you know, one of these things, if you like just keep trying to do like all those, you know, hit attacks and try to just go for the kill you're going to be left wide open mm -hmm. you don't want to do that interesting and i think we're going to get the replay oh. right here 
How did <laughs> that happen? I didn't know you could tech that. It was an in the air from our producer. He was in the air just by a centimeter. That is the term. And yeah, and then as you just saw in the replay, it was tech. So uh, the stage we're going to right now is Kalos. So the okay. band from Marquette was Lilat FD and Town and City. So they're just going to head straight to Kalos. Run it back with the same characters. I like that idea. Let's see another match. Kind of like the last one. I want to see another tech. This is another stage where Bowser can just kill you at a criminally low percent. Sort of like town where, you know, you get them to that platform and you just... Wait, was that a footstool into down air? What? I think it might have been. I am blown away right now by just seeing random things like that. Like, first the tech off of Bowser's down B, and now the footstool into down air. This is, this is such a strange set. Interesting indeed, and it's gonna be a flower bomb Ooh. from Quas sitting at 47. And yeah, just Marquette really just criminally controlling this game so far. And it, one thing to consider here, the, when Quas was hitting with the neutral air, we see that Bowser's actually able to continue moving. That's because of Bowser's tough guy. Tough guy is a grounded armor that is passive. And as long as a move does not, or as long as an individual hit does not do enough knockback, Bowser can keep moving, can keep doing whatever he wants. Indeed. So oh. a lot of those multi-hits just stop working. It looked like Bowser was going for a Bowser bomb, and then I didn't know what the exact move was from mm -hmm. ET, but just got some damage off, and man, one to three in terms of stocks. Quaz is really just having to feel that. For sure, Quaz is just going crazy on Alder right now. That was an attempt at just uh, zero to death right there. I think that was going to happen at 19%. Okay, so nah. Hauser does take the stock, but Quaz just has so much momentum right now in this, stock, in this set. Ooh. What a nice slam from the trainer. Oh. And there's that flame breath again that's just been so deadly for Bowser to use. <coughs> and here comes Charizard to try to finish things off! Oh my god. Oh, a spike to finish it off. Marquette's just been finishing these games with spikes all around. Mm -hmm. And just speed running this match. That's a two stock and a one stock, so that does bring it to... 12 to 0. Seton Hall still yet to get any points on the board. And if Marquette wins this next set as well, it will be very difficult for Seton Hall to make a comeback. Indeed, it already is kind of difficult for Seton Hall. For sure. Already just putting them at a 12 point deficit. Um, but yeah, right here, just once again, seeing a little bit of what we saw from the last match. Uh, just a little bit of kill blows from back and forth. And that was a great down move right here. And then here comes this last play right here with the stock. And it also kind of looks like... Uh, did it look like Charizard took some damage right there? Yes, Charizard did take a hit right there. And because of that, actually, it let, it let Quaz just recover without having to do anything. That was... The footstool on the, on the <laughs> withdrawal... It was crazy. I, I don't know if it was intentional, though. But if it was intentional, that is some intain, insane tech skill from Alzer. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this had... Yeah, this set right here had some crazy, crazy moves. They don't see footstool. Um, just that little bit of action of Charizard and Bowser uh, mm -hmm. going back and forth. I don't know. We'll have to see if we get this in game number three. Tiny for Marquette and uh, Jimbo2000 for mm. Seton Hall. Jimbo, if I remember correctly, is a Lucas player? 
Interesting choice. Taking taking him over Ness, because, I don't know, you gotta watch out for Ness. I will say, Tiny is a Jigglypuff character. Um, yes. We know how we love, love Jigglypuff characters, man. Mm -hmm. They are the greatest. And are we doing bands? No, we're not. We're gonna just go, once again, PS2. I'm I kind of it. I'm kind of expecting that from here on out. For sure, and it just looks like they're trying to end this as soon as possible. Exactly. I think they just want to get some reps in and then just get some dinner and yep. call it a day. I might day even get some dinner. I have to agree. But yeah. so right now um, we have once again Jimbo rocking the Lucas, possibly Tiny rocking the Jigglypuff. And we're, looks like we're about to get started here in just a sec. Um, but within, but these two characters that are going up against each other right now, yep, uh, pretty light, uh, they're pretty light characters, I would say. Yes, definitely are, so that does mean that both of these characters also have very strong kill options, like Jigglypuff with that back air, that forward smash, and of course, Rest, can never forget Rest, mm -hmm. and then... Jimbo having generally like pretty good op options with like oh what well, that tried just it a already. raw rest? I mean rest would have killed there, but I feel like that was a little too bold. I think so. Especially considering Jigglypuff's very light. Indeed. And just to uh, clarify, Tiny is Jigglypuff and Jimbo is uh Lucas. Just just a clarify for all our viewers here but yeah i mean definitely try to do the yeah well, as we saw already trying to do the rest but from what we saw in this that so far in this matchup uh we we've seen crazy things um uh, that's probably the tamest stock we've seen today here comes a pk freeze just wow recovery frames not gonna let it happen that was beautiful timing though on that ledge get up wow this is Tiny definitely knows how to deal with Lucas's timings in terms of ledge trapping. So that's very important in this matchup because that's a lot of Lucas's threat. Indeed. I would say. And now we're just getting a little bit back and forth action of defense to offense from mm -hmm. both of them. Tiny rocking 20% while Jimbo's rocking 65% yes. damage. Even and stocks. One thing to consider also for pro probably the next stock, Jigglypuff does now have a true confirm into rest off of, I think, down throw, which is wild, but definitely scary as well. Oh? Ooh, okay, so that is another part. The down air is a huge part of Jigglypuff's kit because it really helps out so much with... You, you can either combo it into another down air or into grab or sometimes into rest. So you got to really be careful when a Jigglypuff player hits you with that. Oh, that's what it was. Jab, jab, fair rest. Uh, thank you to our streamer. Yes, shout out to our producer, Aeon, always giving us the scoops and giving you guys some great, great smash action right here. For sure. Oh my. Oh. Back air. And that does take the stock and does give Tiny a very solid lead. Jigglypuff may be light, but a 71 to 0 lead is still, like, only 71 on the board. Definitely worth, like, definitely a worthy uh, lead to have gives you a lot of opportunities to get that extra credit. I mean, look at that. It's almost a full stock of difference. Just by a good 20%. But, oh, and now it's just with that hit. Now it is a stock difference. Jimbo with the great thunder recovery. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of dodging blows for blows and blocking them. And finally a grab. Haven't seen a rest yet since the beginning of the game. Wonder if we'll see it, and Ooh. we will not. 
Oh, went for the rest. Of <laughs> there it is. <laughs> little, <laughs> little bit late there, but either way, Tiny will take it. Marquette, 14, Seton Hall, Zilch, and mm -hmm. what a great uh, showing we saw from Tiny. For sure, and Seton Hall needs this set though because if they don't they are guaranteed to lose because yes. right now it's 14-0 and even if it's a one stock win from tiny that means that it becomes 17-0 and that would become impossible for seton hall to make a comeback because the most points you can get in a single set is eight and after this set there will only be two sets left so you got to be careful Mm -hmm. Oh, and they're going right back to PS2. I mean, hey, why not? Literally That's just... True. The bands initially were Kalos, Lilat, and Yoshi's Island. Or Story, one of the two. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. We all know what that stage is, but let's just run him back to PS2. What better place other than do it? Mm -hmm. Definitely a solid stage. And probably thinking... Okay, maybe I can maybe I can make some adjustments. Because at the beginning of the game it was kinda even. So it is up to Jimbo to be able to, you know, bring it back to an even state mm -hmm. after any adaptations. Yep. And our uh, characters are remaining the same. Either way, there will not be a character switch whatsoever. And here comes Jimbo. Getting the early damage here, but Tiny able to get a little bit on his opponent. Ooh. Okay, okay, just a few missed punches here, like we're watching the Matrix or something like that. But Jimbo actually taking a bit of an early lead, but Tiny might be able to bring it back. But this is still impressive for Jimbo to be able to actually get a lead on someone that was pretty dominantly winning in that previous game nearly got nearly landed the pk freeze just a little bit short on where play placing was at but the stick is gonna stick it to tiny right there to take the first lead or the first significant stock lead for jimbo Oh, okay. okay. Oh, okay. That, was, that was almost the kill right there with back air. And that would have given Jimbo a huge lead of two stocks. But still, this is almost a full stock lead. Jimbo is in control this game, actually, which is very good because that's exactly what the team needs. Indeed, just seeing a few bit of combo action. Great use of the, uh, great use of PK fire too, I gotta say. <gasps> That was barely able to make it back, but I'm surprised that Tiny had any jumps left. I have to agree. Tiny's a very, he's playing a very floaty character in Jigglypuff. I believe, sure. actually, I believe Jigglypuff is the lightest in the game. Am I right there? Uh, second, uh, Pichu is the lightest. Pichu is the lightest, that's correct. Yes. All those Pokemons. Yep. Oh, oh my. my. And now just a little bit of defense back and forth wow. and the PK fire taking a stock away and just right back at it with the back air from Tiny. So it looks like Jimbo, if indeed wins, will probably take... If Jimbo can just close out right here, survive as best as he can, take this, take this win. Oh. Gives Seton Hall a lot of chances. Oh, and oh. a nice little script flip right here with the thunder. Absolutely. That was able to bring it back so well. And if Jimbo can just get, like, two more conversions, this could just be the game here. And Jimbo went for the early forward smash attack. Just did not land it. Now this just is so good for Jimbo right now, especially because he's still got an extra stock to work with. Yeah. Oh no! He <gasps> didn't have the extra jump! Wow! So Seton Hall 
is gonna take their first win of today in first this game series. Win. First game win. They and still have to win one more game in order to get this yes. actual first set. And that, that does correct. make it 14-2, uh, if, because if I remember correctly, that was a two-stock, right? I think you are correct. That's what I saw, at least. But yeah, definitely at that very last time, it was a little bit back and forth. It was just the recovery. Mm -hmm. but that was a great opportunity to take it. Like, Jimbo saw the chance, and he took it. And because of that, he was able to actually win this game. And in a pretty convincing fashion, despite losing the first game in a very convincing fashion, showing that this player can make some good adaptations. Indeed, I think the stage was great for Lucas as well. So that's definitely why we saw uh, the band just be running it back. Mm -hmm. And now the band for Seton Hall is going to be Lilat, Smashville, and Kalos. Um, pretty decent bands right there, if I say so. Especially Lilat, who plays that play these days. Oh, and they're going on Battlefield. So this is a stage that might make it a little bit harder to kill off the top. But the platform layout is very nice. Indeed. Definitely a good, uh, you know, just a great, probably a great neutral stage for mm -hmm. both characters. High ceiling. If... Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Pretty good high ceiling for both of them. So they can definitely duke it out in the air in terms of just floating around. Because, you know, both of these characters, lighter. if you're a light character, you can float around in the air pretty well and that's going to give you a chance to try to bust out some moves and get some good damage on your opponent mm -hmm. that's very true and at the moment we're just waiting for them to get into the game battlefield probably one of the easier stages to like actually find on the character on the on the stage select screen because it's like right up there mm -hmm. and, and here we go yep here we go this is Jimbo's opportunity to prove to the team we can still win this. Indeed. Keeping, he's got a lot of a lot of pressure towards his way, and it looks like already shield is very, very low, so he's gotta be on defense. Especially Absolutely. On attacks. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, able to make it back, but still, that was a very scary interaction off stage for Jimbo. Probably wants to play it a bit more safely next time because you do not want to get caught off stage with no jump against Jigglypuff. <gasps> and that's no jump now against Jigglypuff. Okay. Exactly. Got to go with the neutral air attack in the in the sense right there. That's going to be your best bet against Jiggly. That was indeed dangerous, and here's another dangerous move right here oh, oh my that was a beautiful two frame the thunder cannot handle that uh down down smash down smash yes because it caught it as a two frame option and in those scenarios it's honestly a good idea to hold down while doing the up b if you think you'll still have a little a bit more clearance because then that means that you will actually catch the catch anyone that's trying to two-frame you. Great wow. hit from the stick. Just not enough, uh, just a little too much space in between the stages. So definitely couldn't quite get the, get the stock. Oh? Right now. Right now, Tiny's doing their best to just survive. And for almost, almost matching the percentage. I don't even think they're trying to survive. I think they're trying to get another kill here in, before this stock ends. Which, honestly, I could see happening because this is some fantastic momentum and some really good extra credit that they've got piled up. And that fire, that was... I, we'll, we'll replay it, but that either way, that was a stock for Jimbo and trying to get back right into this game. Avoiding some great ledge trapping from Tiny. And it's just going to get away. A little bit dangerous. Almost fell off the stage right there. Wouldn't be able to get back. That's true. 
and Tiny, despite being in the lead, actually could just die very soon because, you know, Lugus has such strong kill power. Mm -hmm. and, I'll, and once again, Jigglypuff, second lightest character in the game. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Oh! Oh! Yeah. That's. Oh, is it enough? Jump. It's not. <gasps> Barely not enough to kill. If it were like 2% more, that would have been enough. There's just a lot of space all around the stage just to recover. Ooh, Jim. You can definitely see, once again, Jimbo trying to get that uh, forward smash attack just not connecting. <gasps> that wasn't enough. What? Able to just barely survive. And an interesting, I think that was an up air attack. Clear some space and be able to recover. This hit's going to go either way and it's going to go tiny. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> that almost killed from all the way over there. <gasps> almost got the freeze. Oh my goodness, that was so close as well. Tiny is on their last legs for this stock for sure. And it's just barely the stage placement for the fire. And it's just going to be that attack. That attack right there looked like a tilt or something like that. And now we're just even Steven. Oh my, oh, but that down air, that's what we talked about at the start of this. It's such a good tool. It converts into so much. It has good positioning, too. <gasps> Jimbo's da dangerously low on his shield. Percentages are even between both. Here comes the freeze. Not going to happen. Little air oh attacks. My. A little, little charge from Jimbo. And the air is going to do it. And Jimbo gets Seton Hall's first set win of today and Seton Hall's gonna live just a little bit longer ladies and gentlemen that was impressive a very good job from Jimbo there being able to clinch it out there with a forward air to end it See, taking advantage of Jigglypuff's weight and the fact that you know Tiny liked going off stage and combining those together it allowed for a very early kill exactly we see right here the first one right here Jigglypuff just doing the splits, able to take away a stock there. And then here comes, that was a PK fire. PK fire, I never, I'm learning something today watching Smash. Mm -hmm. At that percentage, that can kill. Yep, PK fire is a very solid kill option. Especially, like, that was almost the end of the stock right there, that PK fire that missed. So that was very good option coverage from Jimbo. Indeed. So great, great win for Seton Hall. Now the now it's 14 to 5. Marquette's still leading right here. So depending on who uh now these next two characters, um, or next two players I should say, this is gonna be you know, this is gonna be crucial for Seton Hall. They have all the momentum mm -hmm. coming their way now. So they just gotta keep this course going. Absolutely. They cannot afford to let Jimbo's effort go in vain. So I do know that two more players that they have are G-Man and Trey, both of which are Falco players. So this is interesting because Falco is one of those characters that, you know, very high damage, has a lot of those what people call cutscene combos because there's not really that much you can get out of them. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a character that could get a lot of momentum very quickly. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Falco probably really, really good with the, you know, just aerial damage. He plays in the air very, very well. Hitting very well. Uh, side air, up air, obviously. And then juggling, too. I think he's one of the better juggling characters, obviously. And it is going to be G-Man 1021 coming in for Seton Hall. And we will see who Marquette is sending in. All right, about a few more seconds. And it's going to be nobody yet. Hmm. Oh, oh, Spencer's the one. Captain Spencer coming in, and he is the Ness player. Ooh, okay. So we almost had a Ness versus Lucas 
matchup if it were Spencer versus Spencer versus uh I'm blanking right now. Against We just watched this guy and I'm blanking. I, I know, too. I know, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. Tiny no, no, nope. no uh, uh Jimbo. No. Jimbo two thousand. Jimbo. Jimbo. If we had Spencer versus Jimbo, that would have been very poetic. Wouldn't have been a canon matchup because Mother 3 takes place like hundreds of years after Mother 2 or Earthbound. Uh, but, you know, still still poetic to have yeah. two characters from the same franchise fight each other. They're in the same universe. If we watch Subspace Emissary from Brawl, they interact. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. Uh, Wario turns Ness into a trophy and Lucas has to unite with Pokemon Trainer to try to get him back. Yep. That's a great campaign, I just have to say. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic campaign. 